when I look around and see the good thing he does for me. I love I'm not worthy of him outside. It's not all that cold. Mm, not too bad, but it's not good enough to go out and swing. <laughs> for you, you mean? Yeah, for me. Yeah. So, it's been a busy day already. It is. Go get busier. I got to go get a load of wood pellets for the pellet stove. Mm -hmm. Get a ton of those. Bring it in. So. Yeah, and I'm doing the normal Cleaning. How many eggs you getting? 17, 18 a day? Mm -hmm. That one time you brought in a, a baker's dozen at first. Yeah, and that was a week ago. Yeah, and then you and then you brought two dozen even that one day. Yeah. Well, we've, Berries. Got, we've got about mm, 35 chickens, hens, laying hens, put it that way. And uh, about half of them's laying. Yeah, well, we know that one's sure laying. <laughs> yeah, got that on video. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty good. That was a Rhode Island rag. Mm -hmm. I think we, we got a um, mixture out there. We got Rhode Island reds, mm -hmm. Osterlorps, mm -hmm. um, Bard Plymouth Rocks, and some Sex Links. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're all doing pretty good. They all lay uh, nice, large brown eggs, mm -hmm. and that's what you know. That's what we like. Um, yeah, I like the brown. My preference is the brown. 
uh, some people like white, uh, you know, but... It tends just to me like their brown ones are a little richer mm -hmm. and uh, a little, can I say, more dense inside, mm -hmm. so... Yeah. Well, just maybe me though. That's well, I think uh, we've had comments before about there's really no nutritious value than the bread and uh, bread, <laughs> the brown. brown and the white. But for me, I like the brown because I just do, really. Well, you know, I I don't know how they can check the nutrition value mm -hmm. between the two, but mm -hmm. uh, it just seems like. There's more on your plate with a brown egg to me. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just the way I, I see yeah. it. But, you know, if it come down mm -hmm. to it and I was starving, I'd eat a white egg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. You'd eat an egg, no matter uh, here, what color. We're at the middle of February here, the 14th, mm -hmm. and uh, spring's around the corner and I'm getting ready to get busier with garden stuff. I've got to put the uh, hooped trellises fencing mm -hmm. for my pole beans up over. I'm, I'm gonna, excited about that. I'm going to make a giant inverted U and we'll plant the pole beans at the end of each side of that fencing and let them climb. That way uh, Mama and myself can just walk through the center and pick beans. Especially for Mama. <laughs> well, me too. So. But anyway, that's just one plan for mm -hmm. this year. We've got uh, we've got a couple apple trees dry rooted out in the mm -hmm. cool uh, area of mm -hmm. a building out here, and waiting for a good time to plant them. So we're gonna do that soon mm -hmm. and uh, get them in the ground. We've got a Fuji and a. Golden Delicious. Mm -hmm. Love that apple. <laughs> and I'm actually, I'm cleaning out the windowsill. I'm going to put a big oblong planter that um, my daughter had painted for me black and put it in a window and I wanted to uh, put a couple seeds in the ground inside the house. I guess because I'm getting so anxious for the spring, but also I do like to raise, you know, things in the window. Because you can't raise a lot of stuff in the house, yeah. whether you know it or not, in flower pots and all. You can, you can uh, raise some herbs and you can raise some lettuce and spring onions Here all little, year there, round, little, really. Right? Hmm? Here, a little, there, a little. Yeah, all yeah. A lot of people yeah. don't know that though. You know, I, I didn't know it really until yeah. years back. So. So you really love those apples, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh yes. That's what Eve said. We've been, um, we'll, we'll do a separate video on this, but we've been homesteading all of our life, you know, all of our married life anyway, in a one sense or the other. Uh, in the last 15, 20 years, we've got into it heavier with our wood chip garden and stuff like that there. Um, of course, we've only been doing wood chip garden about four years now, and then three or four. Mm -hmm. But uh, so wonderful too! It oh works yeah. out really good. But uh, we've been homesteading, you know, uh, most of our married life, which is going on 51 years now. Mm -hmm. May. Yeah, but anyway, homesteading is more than just raising a garden. Uh, homesteading mm -hmm. is taking your livelihood or your self-sufficiency lifestyle beyond your property and into the surrounding wooded areas where you hunt. Mm -hmm. Hunting is a large part of our homesteading life. 90% um, of our meats come from the wild. We, you know, Venison, we, we shoot multiple deer every year. Uh, we harvest them. Uh, they're all legal. We have tags here, generous tag limit in West Virginia. Um, 
squirrels, um, rabbit, things of such, you know, in the woods. Very, very healthy meat for you. Uh, low in cholesterol, low in fats. Uh, very healthy meat. And that's, that's a part of homesteading. I know a lot of folks, they feel like they poor thing they don't want to shoot that poor thing. well the thing is it's a type of conservation hunting is a conservation it's conserving the natural resources from overpopulation um, overpopulation only means disease starvation uh, depleting a food source and therefore they'll be starving uh, so there with hunting is a very good conservation tool to where it's benefiting the whole herd, maybe not that one particular animal that you harvest, but the rest of the herd is benefiting from it because you're cutting down on the, the population. Um, and I guess a lot of people feel like boo-hoo, you know, about harvesting that animal for food, but the thing is, you can't you can't pin a human attribute on an animal they just do not have it god created man in his image he didn't create a bear in his image he created man in his image and gave man dominion over all the animals of the earth to watch over them not to abuse them but to watch over them and uh conserve them and and you know, watch over the population so that uh, they don't overpopulate and therefore uh, have all these diseases and things. So, our channel, our YouTube channel is Stevens Family Outdoors, a traditional homestead. Mm -hmm. And that's w what it is. We don't just plant mm -hmm. veggies in the garden mm -hmm. or fruit trees. Mm -hmm. We do the whole thing. Oh, sir. It, it's all homesteading. Mm -hmm. Hunting is homesteading. Mm -hmm. Trapping is homesteading. Mm -hmm. You know, it, whether I'm trapping for uh, the population control, whether I'm trapping for food. Mm -hmm. uh, you say trapping for food. Yeah, beaver is a very delicious food. Mm -hmm. Not only do they have a nice pelt that you can utilize it, and make a little bit of income, but you can also utilize the meats from that and uh, muskrat also they call them uh, marsh rabbit <laughs> but yeah. it's all up here you <laughs> yeah. know and people get this mm -hmm. uh, thought in their mind that that ooh musk rat you know well or squirrel looks like a well mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a rodent but i tell you what <laughs> You can't find very much better eating out there, folks. Mm -mm. Especially if Ma fixes it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think what happens with um, a lot of people is it's, um, there are some people that can't handle looking at, you know, a harvest animal, but they can eat it. Out of sight, out of, sight, out of mind. Yeah, yeah, out of sight, out of mind. Which, if you go to a butcher shop and you buy a hamburger and you buy you know just different meats it died uh, somehow that, didn't yeah it? those have been harvested but you didn't see it happen so you can eat it well well and and, and that that's perfect mom mm -hmm. because that is just one of the things that if someone wants to extend their homesteading life mm -hmm. further that's something that they're going to have to uh how can I say this, get over or grow beyond is do is harvesting a wild the wildlife mm -hmm. and or watching it being harvested mm -hmm. and butchered and prepared. You you have to get over that because what would happen, say now I'm not a doomsday preacher or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying what would happen mm -hmm. if the grocery stores would or, or the system would go down mm -hmm. for a little while mm -hmm. or the computers mm -hmm. all it have to do is the computers go down mm -hmm. computer system go down and mm -hmm. there all your lots of things uh, stop oh, yeah. the grocery yep. store mm -hmm. you know they that they depend on computers 
What if that happened? Mm -hmm. Could you survive mm -hmm. a month or two months or six months on what you know and what you're doing now? So that's where we are. We're, we're in a complete homesteading mode to where the hunting, the fishing, the gardening, the mm -hmm. planting of uh, fruit trees, uh, the raising of livestock that we have, mm -hmm. and, and things as such, we do it all. And that's, we just feel like that is a, the complete homesteader. Mm -hmm. And I'm not knocking anybody that doesn't like to hunt, no. don't get me wrong. No. But we're just, mm -hmm. we're just saying how that we, as yeah. Steve, the Stevens mm -hmm. family, perform and yeah. how we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it seems to be working very, very, very well. And mm -hmm. you can save a bundle of money. Oh my, yes. In meats. It's just like I showed my son the other day when I made a kettle soup. I went back in my pantry, got everything I needed for that soup, and uh, so yeah. yeah. You either canned it or you dry canned it. Mm-hmm. Dry oh, yeah. can, I can, I uh, dehydrate, I do all that. Now, you know, and two, you gotta look at it like this. A lot of our listeners and people who watch us um, were. Course, we're the older generation. We've been married 50, going 51 years. That's kind and of funny. I know, but um, the the greatest thing we can do in our lifetime here is help you understand better about the things that we do and um, the way we live and the reason we live. And of course, the number one in our heart and life is our Lord and Savior Jesus oh, Christ. Yeah. He's a nucleus. Yes, he is. He's, but, a, he's the one that has mm -hmm. ordained this homesteading mm -hmm. thing. I mean, from the very beginning, mm -hmm. it was his plan that we would be self-sufficient mm -hmm. and uh, not mm -hmm. dependent on everybody mm -hmm. else. And I say mm -hmm. that, I mean the grocery stores, mm -hmm. uh, this and that, or you just walk out here. Mm -hmm. and. People have become, in the last 50 or 60 years, they have become inherently lazy. And, and I'm not meaning that in a derogatory way, but just sit back and if you need something, just hop in the car and go to the food mm -hmm. line or the Acme store or the AMP, mm -hmm. whatever, pick it up mm -hmm. and come on back and sit down and, and watch another program. Or, mm -hmm. it's even gotten worse now, just get on computer and have Walmart deliver it to your door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which we're not against that. No. We do get stuff, you know, like, well, uh, cook, we, you know, some cleaning supplies and our, you know, different things, but I hardly ever buy any food from, quote, the grocery store. Um, and if you all see, too, you're hearing it on the news, on our it's not good computers. For you. There's just so much contamination going on yeah. right now. It's a scary thing, really, to go buy something from the store. And it's not just... Uh, contamination of say like uh, E. coli or botulism mm -hmm. but it's it's what they're the preparations of these mm -hmm. things and the things w that are deemed mm -hmm. um, organic that are mm -hmm. sold mm -hmm. I, I give them this they raise it organically but when they sell it to large quantity shippers mm -hmm. they spray it for preservation right there. Mm -hmm. So that knocks down on the organic mode mm -hmm. of that product. Yes, mm -hmm. it was raised organic, but once it gets to the the big uh, producer, he has to preserve it for so many days so he can get it mm -hmm. to his uh, uh, shippers and, mm -hmm. and uh, customers. Uh, so he has to preserve it with mm -hmm. things that are not very good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, un unless, of course, you know um, a specific farmer that raises their own meat, and you know how they raise it, and we do yeah. know mm -hmm. one. That's what I and, was going to say. And we do know mm -hmm. one, and they mm -hmm. do not use any kind mm -hmm. of uh, fertilizers or mm -hmm. sprays that are not natural uh, to the ecosystem, and they do a large mm -hmm. amount of stuff. 
and sometimes we do buy some things from them like uh, the big Spanish onions and sweet mm -hmm. onions, oh, yeah. things mm -hmm. like that there, or turnips mm -hmm. when they have an overabundance well, and we want to put mm -hmm. some up. If we didn't get a big mm -hmm. enough crop or if we need more to put mm -hmm. up, we go ahead and do that. Yeah, well that's why I say you can support your local um, um, farm, meat, markets, you know, yeah. farm markets and your butcher shops that you know it's, like I said, that they um, you are know how having... They do it. The, yeah, grain fed and stuff, yeah. We have one mm -hmm. in, uh, close by us here, mm -hmm. it's a pretty large one, mm -hmm. uh, a, a meat house is what mm -hmm. we're saying, a butcher shop to where mm -hmm. it's very large and we just downright ask them, mm -hmm. where do these cattle come from? Mm -hmm. And you know, they said they're mm -hmm. their cattle. Uh, they raise mm -hmm. them, they raise them, you know, grass fed. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and whatever grain fed from their own fields, mm -hmm. so you know you have to take them at their word for that. And uh, that being said, that is the only other meats that we buy mm -hmm. are uh, the meats that um, mm -hmm. are from these these places right. that we know, and we have done our homework, mm -hmm. and we know that they're not injected with uh, right preservatives that are detrimental to your health. Right. If you stop and look at it in the last 50, 60 years, cancer mm -hmm. has grown more and more and more and more mm -hmm. prevalent um, and I've got an idea why. Mm -hmm. All right. right. So, but um, once again, you know, this is uh, Maul and Paul's idea, not it's ideas, we but do how it. we do it. Yeah. 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 We want to stress that fact that it's how we do it. This We're not knocking anybody nope. or trying to put anybody down for nope. a different way of life. But, you know, y'all seem to enjoy our program. So we thought we would interject a little bit of, you know, what we do here on, on the farm. Because you youngins, I'm telling you, there's no better way of life than the homestead. And you might look at us and say, well, they're just old folks. Right. Well, yep. least ways we got to be old folks. Yeah. <laughs> and this is why, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. the lifestyle that you live when you're mm -hmm. young will dictate right. how you feel when mm -hmm. you get older. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and close mm -hmm. with that saying. That mm -hmm. was pretty good, if I have to say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> this is Paul. And this is Maul. And we're in the house, in our chairs <laughs> sitting right here talking to you guys so subscribe and push that notification bell and if you have any comments or questions yeah that you want to ask us feel free to do so because we'd love to hear from you and we love you all and hope you have a blessed wonderful day and we do appreciate you. everybody that watches and listens so god bless you today have a great day Thank you.